Hey everybody, welcome back to Wildcard Workshop. Today we're going to be continuing the work on our transition material. We're going to try and get it as close to functional as we can. There's still going to be a few quirks that have to be worked out down the road, but for the most part we'll have something that transitions the creature into the world and back out of it. We're going to make use of timelines in this video, as well as our event dispatchers, which we covered before. The timelines are going to be a little bit interesting though. Uh, those are something we haven't touched before, but they are really handy for materials that need to change over a period of time. So we're going to make use of one for both the transition in and out effect. We're going to be doing this through a dynamic material interface. That probably sounds fancy if you're not familiar with them. But it's really not that complicated to make a regular material into a dynamic material. It's just a few nodes. So let's go ahead, head over to the dev kit. I'll show you how it's done. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing I did was I created a buff. Okay, uh, just a child of primal buff. Uh, we're not really going to be using any of the standard buff functionality for the most part. First things first. Let's go over the variables that I added. So we've got a material override. This is the non-transition style of the material. Uh, it is just a standard material instance. Uh, and then we have the transition material variable. This one is also just set as material instance, but we can put a dynamic material into it. Then I put in a bool for is in transition. This is more of a gating thing. And then transition rate. And basically, um, we're going to make it so that the, the speed of the transition can be adjusted on the fly, uh, maybe potentially with those augment crystals down the road. But for now, just mostly also so that it's easy for in testing to try out different values. So in the material override, so these are actually set in the defaults right here, okay? Uh, in the material override slot, I put the sentry mat solid MIC, and in the transition material, I just put the sentry mat MIC. Remember, this is the one that does the actual transition effect. Uh, it's in transition is a state bool, so we don't mess with that in the defaults, and then transition rate is just set to one. And then in our Sentry Tower Foundation, which is the primary controlling actor for uh, handling the spawning and all of that. So to our uh, Sentry Tower Foundation, I only added one variable, which is the transition rate. And the reason I have added it to both is this one is going to be controlled by this one. But we wanted to have it sort of separated because we want the transition rate to be individual to at the time that a creature is spawned in. Uh, this is mostly to m prevent any kind of um, abuse. Uh, that's, that's mostly what came to mind uh, as people changing the augment crystals down the road or something like that. So let's go ahead and go back to the buff. Let's focus on this first. Now I know this probably looks like a mess. Uh, it, it was a little bit complicated. Um, so let's see what we've got here. We've got our so on begin play, slight delay, switching at authority on the servers on the authority sides. Uh, we will get the reference to the owner of the buff, which would be the, the dino creature. Uh, we will s prevent targeting and movement so it doesn't move around during the transition phase. Uh, we will do a little calculation here for the transition rate. And the reason that we're doing it like this is so that it stays in time with this timeline here. We'll get to that in a moment. And I know you saw it over here, but don't you don't add it through this menu. Uh, Again, we'll explain in a moment. Uh, so we're going to set a timer on this. The timer goes through, and that's when it uh, turns off that prevent targeting and movement. And 
the uh, in transition gating bool. And then we will set the actor hidden in game. So it'll start out invisible. Now on the client side, we will create a dynamic material instance from our transition material variable. Uh, we'll make sure it's valid. If so, we're going to set it back into the variable. So we've swapped it out with the standard material type to a dynamic type. We'll set the play rate on that material. Okay. Virtual transition. Oh, yes. Uh, this is the play rate of the timeline. So this will us this determines how fast it actually goes over the timeline. It's like it's scaling value. That's sort of how we're we're adjusting the rate of uh, the transition itself. And then we get the owner of the buff again, Dino character, because this is the client side. We don't have that reference yet. And then we will cast this to a dynamic material. If we're in the middle of a transition, then we are going to adjust, which in the middle of a transition means we have set, like we've started at this phase, um, or it's, it's already started, excuse me. Somewhere. There might be a bug in there actually. Let's we'll see about that. <clears throat> but if we're marked as in transition, we're going to adjust the values of these so that they're at uh, the 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 transition is zero. Remember, this vanish control is a property on our material instance. Uh, if we go back up here and we go to materials and sentry map, if we come down here and we go to scalar. Vanish control. So there's our parameter. So we're setting the value of that parameter using the set scalar parameter value node, which takes the dynamic material. This only works on dynamic material instances, though. You can't do it with regular ones. And then we're going to loop through all of the materials on the creature, okay? And we're going to swap all of them out with our uh, transition material. Because it putting it in this variable doesn't just automatically make it work. We actually have to swap it out on the mesh itself. Now, if we're not in a transition, we're gonna set vanish control to one, which means it's the we're at the fully visible state. Zero is invisible, one is fully visible. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna swap out all the materials. But we're going to do it with our regular material, the non-vanished version. Now, you're probably thinking, why did we bother changing the value of this dynamic material instance if we're not going to be putting it on there? Well, we're doing that to set a starting state for it later. Um, so when the creature needs to be detransitioned, that it is already in the proper value, and then we can just move on from there. Now after that, it goes on here and it binds to the uh, character died. So now we know when the character is going to die. We'll set a timer delegate of three seconds. Doesn't loop. We're going to bring that delegate all the way back here to the transition out event. Now, now we come to the timeline section here. Okay, I've made two custom events. Transition in and transition out. Now these... Well, for the most part, they, they the transition effect only actually occurs on the client side. We don't do it on the server uh, for the visual effect. And this is because the server doesn't need to know about it. We can simply offload this to the clients, and only the clients that need to even bother with it will do so. So when we fire this transition in event, which gets, which happens up here after the loop, by the way. We call it the first time. Uh, it will do a run 
or a multicast from the server to all of the clients that are relevant. Uh, we'll do a switch on NetAuthority. Uh, so it only happens on instances which actually have a visual aspect to them, the player server or the client. And then the first thing it does is if the timeline is already running, we're going to stop it. Okay. Now stop doesn't revert its value. It just stops the timeline at whatever value it has. And then we're going to start playing. Now we're using play as opposed to play from start is because if there's already a transition in effect and then all of a sudden the state that determines whether or not it needs to appear or disappear changes, we want to handle that smoothly. We don't want to do that um, that really harsh transition where it's like halfway through a transition and then something that happens that prompts the other direction and then it just swaps up to the, the, the extreme value all of a sudden and it looks really bad. So we do that by stopping the value and then doing play. We don't use play from start or reverse from end. So once it plays, okay, we'll get this update. Now the, the timeline itself, when you add a timeline, you just come up here into the context menu and you'll find a button here that says add timeline. You click on that, you'll add this node, okay? Now you can rename it. It suddenly shows up down here. That's how we got that variable over here. Yeah, right here that we could uh, fire some functions on to adjust it. Now, this probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And you'll notice there's some differences. Like I've got this transition delta down here, but it's not up here. The reason is that this node has a ton of other functionality. Okay, this all works on tracks. So for ours, for instance, uh, I am using a float track and then basically this is if you've dealt with animation at all this is an animation keyframe okay this is an animation timeline so we can set the time to zero at the start value to zero and there is our starting one okay and then we can add another key and then let's say five seconds down the road we wanted it to be one okay or one not ten Okay, so that's that's the range of our um, scalar on the material is 0 to 1. So this would make it go from 0 to 1 over a period of 5 seconds at a play rate of 1. If we adjust the play rate, it's going to go through this either faster or slower depending on what value we give it for the play rate. Now there's other track types. We've got vectors. We have event tracks. Okay. There's all kinds of crazy things that you can do with timelines. You've even got color tracks. So you can have it output like color values. Whoop. Give me, give me, yeah, there we go. So like now you can see there's all these other pins. And then we've got this new track too. That's the event one. So it's, an extremely powerful little node that you can play with. Now, in the case of our VSS, our transition material, it might look a little strange. Uh, we do like a, a jump from zero to, what is that, like 0.45 really quickly. And that's mostly sort of a weird offset with some a lot of the creatures where there's a point where um, this is like a dead zone where the actual size of the creature doesn't match what you see. So this kind of fills in that gap a little bit quickly so that we're not staring at dead air for a long time. Now, what happens is as it goes through the timeline, it will fire off these update ticks. Now, as they fire off that transition delta, it's not really a delta. I don't know why I call it a delta. It's a new value. It, it outputs the value of the track. So that's a misnomer on my part, calling it the delta. But that's what. You, but you should know that's what it does: is it outputs the value at that specific time in the track every time this fires. So at when this fires, we get get our dynamic material instance, and then we set that value to the vanish control. So it'll be a slow transition, or a gradual transition, smooth. Once it's done, we will get the owner of 
the buff, cast it to Primal Dino character. We're going to get those meshes again. We're going to get the dynamic material instance for the transition again. And then if the direction is forward, we're going to set the value of it to one. So like we're saying, hey, this transition's done. Then we're going to get all of the materials, make sure they're valid, all of the materials on the, the dino mesh, make sure they're valid, and then give them a the, the more, the non-transition material, okay? Put that into each slot of the creature's mesh. Now on the transition out, this is when the creature is going away. Uh, first, it does some stuff on the server. Okay, so this is multicast again. So it executes on everything, not just the clients, but also the server. So on the server, we're going to do our little transition rate um, adjustment there. Put that in as a delay. Okay, so we're going to wait until this transition is done on the client. Okay, by doing this delay. Uh, it is a rough estimate, but we're sort of locking in, hey, this is what our transition rate is going to be on the server. Even if the clients aren't quite caught up, maybe somebody joined late, something like that, or, you know, came into the area late, something like that. This is going to be the actual value of what happens when it's triggered. Uh, after that delay, we're going to get a cast to the primal dino character, and then we're going to destroy the actor. Okay, we don't want to leave a body behind. We're just going to destroy it. Um, I also want to mention this uh, might not be the right value. Uh, it was a rough guess sort of to check uh, the amount of time. Now on the client, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the transition and we're going to, on the instances that have visual aspect, we're going to first, <laughs> first we're going to come down here. We're going to say if we're in transition, uh, get the owner, get the primal dino character, get all of the materials, okay, on the mesh. We're going to get our dynamic material instance. We're going to Where is that? That may not need to be there. Or something might have gotten disconnected. I'll have to check that later. Um this might have been from testing. <laughs> Yay. So there might be another bug there. You might want to check it out. Um, I am leaving, if I do find any bugs throughout this video, I am leaving them in. Uh, we haven't done a whole lot of um, debugging coverage yet. So I want to give anybody that's following along with these an opportunity to try and figure out what's wrong for themselves. And then when we come back around to this stuff, then I can give you a solution on what's changed and how I fixed those bugs. So again, this might be something. I'm pretty sure this is not right. Uh, it might simply be that... Well, no, that doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. Because that's not hooked up to anything. All right, anywho. Um, it's going to go through the materials. It's going to set the value on the dynamic material instance to one uh, for the vanish control. Then it's going to go through all of the uh, materials on the mesh and replace them with the transition material. No, with the with the non-transition material. Okay, because again, this is something is weird here, but this worked. So mess with it later um <laughs> set the uh non-transition materials right that is yeah that's the non-transition material all right this is what happens when you make something <laughs> and it, comment your code it helps uh i was in a bit of a hurry when i was putting this together anywho after that We'll come back up here. We'll do sort of the same thing that we did above. We're going to hit stop first, and then we're going to go in reverse. If the transition uh, animation is already in effect, uh, we're just going to stop it where it is and then reverse from that point. Same thing happens here. Uh, 
on the update, it's going to assign a new value to that vanish control material. No, I'm pretty sure this should be what's there. Now watch this breaks it. Pretty sure it's supposed to be the material, the transition material though. So you can probably make that change or swap them back to find out which one's the right one. Um, now that covers this graph. Now, if we go over to the primal structure sentry tower, I do believe, yeah, okay. So when we've got an overlap, we're going to start our combat state. You remember that? In that scenario, we spawn a virtual creature, which we've done before. Now, though, when we spawn it, there we go. There's that in transition variable that we were setting before. Uh, we set it here so that it gets to both client and server sooner. So after we've added our buff, well, after we add the creature to our stack, which is where we stopped this uh, function before, we will... Do oh, and by the way, I also added this, because remember every time we spawned when it pooped, uh, after we spawn the dino, we're going to set it hidden in game. We're going to say don't actually emit poop. This prevents it from putting up stacks and piles of poops if it keeps getting respawned and despawned over and over. And then after that, we're going to add it to our virtual creatures array. We're going to add the buff, our virtual buff up here. Then we're going to set the is in transition value. We do not hit multicast on this. Uh, if you hit, if you check this bool as true from outside of an actor's uh, graphs, uh, it will cause issues. So don't do that out there. There is a function for it called multicast property. Uh, if you want to do that, that's the one that you use from outside of a, uh, an actor graph. Don't do it. Don't check this little box from outside. Only do this from inside of an actor. And then we set the transition rate on the buff on here. Now, when we are, when we're going to be done, we're going to do some checks to make sure that there's no hostiles in an area, but for now we're just doing it on every time because during testing, there's only one of me, uh, at least for now. So when I leave the area, we're going to turn off his in combat and yada, yada. We've gone through this before in the previous one. Now we're going to get the buff. Okay. So we're going to go through all of our virtual creatures in the list. We're going to do a for each on them. Uh, we're going to stick them to the ground so they can't move and they can't attack. I'm going to get the reference to the buff. And then I'm going to cast it and do call the transition out event from there. Okay. So this will actually get called from the structure. And that's the whole thing. That's everything that we've changed. Uh, let's see how it looks. Let's see if I broke it by changing that one value real quick. I uh, probably did. So we'll pop our crystal in, just like so. Step out of the area. Give it a few seconds to update. And then... Oh. Now you can see the name. Unfortunately, I don't know of a way to turn off the name plates, but give it a moment. Maybe I did break it. Oh, nope, it was working. Okay, well, oh, I must have the value set to something really slow at the moment. So right now it's a really slow transition in while I was testing. Uh, now there's two Rexes because I left and re-entered. Um, the other Rex will despawn on its own. Uh, 
but the new one will be coming in very shortly here. Well, maybe not very shortly, but it's coming in. Hold on. Oh, there we go. And you can see that whole effect. And that's the timeline that's controlling that transition. And you can see our, our custom material on there. I like it. And there he is. And then if we go out, and oop, see them sort of dissolve away. And then with augments, we could make it so that that transition is faster, uh, so that creatures are ready to go and defend your base sooner, things like that. So that gives us an opening for those augments. And away it goes. Just like that. What do you think? Pretty good, right? Uh, again, yeah, there's going to be some things that need to be fixed. Uh, for now, this will work for our purposes, though. You should have a pretty good understanding of how to handle dynamic materials over time, as well as getting different events to interact with it and cause things to happen with the material. As you probably noticed throughout the video, there are still a few quirks to work out of our material. I'm going to work on those maybe for the next video or when we come back around to this stuff for a second pass. But that's all for today. Until next time, happy modding.